In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this animated effect to make your footage look like the etching or engraving illustrations used on money. This effect is completely procedural, so once we set it up, we can just swap out our footage and apply it to anything. I'll be explaining everything you need to build it in this video and you can buy the project file on Gumroad as well if you prefer to save yourself the time. We're starting in a new comp with a white background and let's drag in a reference image to the style we're trying to emulate. Now a hand drawn engraving or etching is completely bespoke. Every line is made to run around the contours of the face and describe the form and the thickness of the line is there to describe the shading. The lines also cross hatch over one another for more shading as well. Now we won't be able to get custom lines for every frame, but we're gonna get us as close as possible where it gives us that illusion. So let's drag in our footage, which is this clip of Nicolas Cage playing the real Benjamin Franklin in National Treasure. Someone's gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. And we're choosing this because it is modern cinema's greatest masterpiece. And let's start by adding some effects to our footage. We're gonna do that on a new adjustment layer so it's easy to swap out our clip with something else. So we can create a new one by pressing Control, Alt, and Y, or Command, Option, Y, and let's rename that effect because we always label our layers. And the first effect we're gonna add is tint to turn our footage grayscale. And now let's add the curves effect so that we can adjust the contrast and then the effect posterize. Now posterize limits the amount of colors in your image. Now it's set to seven. So it's only showing seven shades of gray. And what we're gonna do is make each of these sections of colors a different thickness of line. Let's take ours down to five to make it a bit more manageable. And now let's adjust the curves to get a bit more contrast. This is pretty dark already. So let's bump up the white a fair bit. There, I think that's pretty good. We get a lot of variation in the face. And now our clip is ready. So let's select our clip and that adjustment layer and pre-comp that with Control Shift C. And let's name that footage. And now let's create our line. So let's hide our footage and our reference image for the moment and select our pen tool, making sure no other layer is selected. Let's zoom out a bit. And I wanna draw a line that's bigger than our comp vertically. So I'm gonna click, hold shift, and then click again underneath. Maybe extend that up a little bit. I make that a bit longer. And let's make sure it has no fill. And let's give it a black stroke of one pixel. Now let's zoom back in. And of course, let's name that lines one. Let's open up its properties and add a zigzag. And we want to change the zigzag from corner to smooth. So it's a smooth curve. Let's leave its size at five, but up the ridges per segment to 30. There, that's looking good, but you can adjust to taste, of course. And now let's add a repeater. Now repeater is just gonna duplicate that line. So let's open up the repeater properties. Now we want a lot more copies. I'm just gonna drag this way up. Let's zoom out and then change the offset to a negative value. So it just fills up to the left of our screen. And if we open up the transform properties, we can see it's already moving the position 100 pixels on the X axis. So let's change that to 10 to make them much closer together. There we are, they are nice and tight. We will need to offset. Let's drag down that offset again to fill out the screen to the left. There, our first lines is done. Let's close those properties. And we're gonna duplicate lines one with Control or Command D. And then on lines two, we're gonna increase the stroke from one to two, then duplicate it again. This time increase the stroke to five, duplicate it once more, and then increase it to seven. The numbers don't matter too much. We can adjust those later, but this is just so we get thicker and thicker lines. And now let's apply those to our footage. And we're gonna do that using the extract effect and alpha mats. So let's put our footage over the top of line one and let's hide all of our layers except that footage. And then add the extract effect to it. Now the extract effect lets you well extract only a certain range of colors. And because we've got that posterize effect on our footage set to five, we've only got five shades of gray and therefore five lines in this graph. But if we go into that footage comp and turn off that posterize effect, head back into our main comp. Let's actually rename that comp over here in the project panel as well. Let's call that engraving main because it'll be our main comp. Now we can see in the histogram for our extract effect, we've got a whole bunch of lines here. And each of these with lines represents a color. And the taller the line is, the higher amount of that color. So it looks like we've got a lot of mids in this image, but it's pretty consistent throughout. Now, if we drag the right side of this gradient bar underneath from the top right-hand corner and push it to the left, it will make only visible the areas in this selection. So by dragging it to the left, we're removing more and more of the white values. Let me turn the transparency grid on so that's more obvious. So here we can see we're only taking the very darks and the mids. We can drag that to the middle, get the mids, and all the way to the right to just get the highlights. 
Now, if we drag out the bottom right hand corner of this gradient rectangle here, it softens that transition. So it fades out into transparency rather than just being a harsh line. And you can see that down here in the white softness as well and black softness on the other side too. Let's keep the white softness at 30. And we're actually gonna go back into our footage comp and turn back on posterize. Then let's head back. And now we've got our five different layers visible up here. And we're gonna use this effect to divide the layers into that section. So in our first layer, I wanna drag this all the way to the right. So the bottom edge of this rectangle is all the way at the right. So now we're removing everything from our image that is pure white. And everything else remaining is what we want to fill with our thinnest line, which is lines one. So let's make lines one visible uh, and our background as well. And we want to change the track mat on lines one from none to alpha mat. There, so our thin lines is populating every area of our footage except for the very bright widest values. And that continues throughout this clip. And the clip is only two seconds long. So I'm going to trim my work area down to two seconds too. Great, now let's do that for the rest of our lines. So we're gonna duplicate our footage with Command or Control D, drag that above footage lines two, turn lines two on, make that an alpha mat. And then on our footage histogram, we're just gonna drag this over to our next step. So now if we zoom in and look closer, we can see our thicker lines are appearing at the next level of gray. And let's do that twice more, duplicate, alpha mat, move the histogram, and then once more for our thickest lines. Now this is starting to look pretty close. So if you're finding this video helpful, please give it a like. It really does help the channel a lot and lets me be able to keep sharing these videos every single week. But first, a little bit about this video sponsor, NordVPN. Have you ever browsed the internet, looking up some of the latest but risque animation techniques? Well, you best protect yourself. NordVPN is the best way to mask your identity protect your online security so that you can browse freely without prying eyes knowing what you're up to, like checking on your project files to see if you've labeled your layers. It uses a high level of encryption to keep data thieves out of your business and stops your ISP from selling your entire browsing history to the highest bidder. No one wants that. NordVPN will have your back. And of course, you get access to all that sweet, sweet region locked content. I wanna be honest, there is nothing on the Australian Netflix but you just change your country and bam, you're watching some awesome animated movies like Into the Spider-Verse and Song of the Sea. And of course, all 400 episodes of my favorite Mexican soap opera. And NordVPN has a very special Christmas deal. Every purchase of a two-year plan will get you four additional months free. Go to NordVPN forward slash Marriott and use our coupon Marriott at checkout so you can live your life online with security and not let those baddies do God knows what with your data. Now if we drag up our reference image and turn that on, we can see that the lines aren't all in the same direction. There's a cross-hatching effect going on to enhance the shading. So let's rotate some of our lines. I think this works best when the majority of our lines are diagonal. So let's open up the rotation of lines two and three by pressing R on our keyboard and let's rotate them 45 degrees. And now let's make lines four minus 45 degrees. And there, now we've got cross hatching lines. And depending on what size you're viewing this video at, you might get a moiré effect where strange patterns emerge with repeating lines. I can see that if I zoom out a little bit, we know that when I show this at 100% size, you can see that the lines are all working. There, it's looking closer now, but there are a few things we need to do to make this effect look its best. We've got this clear divide between the thickness of our lines. It goes from thickness one to thickness two in these big patchy sort of islands across the whole image. And when we look at our reference, that isn't quite what's happening here. These are all tapering out into nice pen strokes. So let's change that. And doing that, it's a two-step process. So these sharp divisions are coming from our footage being posterized into just those five layers, those five colors. Now that really helped us when we were separating our layers with the histogram using the extract effect but we don't really need it now. So let's go inside that footage pre-comp and turn off posterize. Then let's head back into our main comp and we can see it's a lot more detailed now. Now it looks like these lines are tapering off into nothing, but they're not really. If we zoom closer, they're not getting any thinner, they're just fading out. And in some areas like here, we can see the thicker line is fading out into the thinner line and gives us a bit of the effect that it's tapering out. But also it means that our image isn't just pure black and white anymore. We have all these gray images, which add more detail, but don't really look like how an engraving or an etched illustration would look. But we can get rid of that using a very handy trick to increase the contrast. So let's create a new adjustment layer with Control-Alt-Y again, 
And let's add the effect Gaussian Blur. And we want to blur it ever so softly. Maybe just two might be enough. Just to soften the edges of these lines as well. And then let's add the Levels effect. And let's bring the black and the white points closer to the middle to add some more contrast. There, we've effectively getting rid of all of those gray areas that we had before. Now this does take us a bit further back to that sort of posterized look where there were clear islands of lines of different thicknesses, but we're in a much better place. And we're gonna fix that with our next step, which is also gonna remove another thing that isn't quite like our reference. In our reference, we can see as our lines taper down, they also sort of break apart into these dashes. So let's add that to our footage. And we're gonna do that by adding noise on top of our footage which will then get pushed through all of these comps with our mats, turned into our lines, and then crushed more into tapered points with this adjustment layer. Now we also wanna see what's happening in this main comp while we're adding that noise. So let's lock this composition window up here. Let's open up our footage comp and drag that to the right. Select the engraving main over here. So now we can see both of them at the same time. Let's create a new adjustment layer just for that noise. And we wanna drag that under our effects. Now, if we just add the vanilla noise effect, and let's bump it up really high to something like 50%. We can see we do get a much nicer taper of our lines, which gives us more details, but it looks very scratchy and distressed, like an old photocopied photo, which you might want. Hell, if you've watched any of my other tutorials, you know I love gritty, grainy effects, but there are two things I don't like about this. One is that this noise is always animating. We can't just turn this effect to static. And that doesn't look great when we pop back into our main comp after all the effects are applied. And sorry, we're gonna see a bit of double for now. But that animated noise is making the this effect just look too jittery as it animates now and it doesn't look great. And also the dashes that we wanted to create in our reference, they're far too small, they don't really look purposeful. They just look like distressed paper or ink that's been scratched off. So we're gonna fix that by adding a better noise. So let's go into that comp again, get rid of that noise effect and add the effect fractal noise. Now fractal noise is nice and static and it also has a lot more parameters that we can fiddle with. First of all, it's far too big. So let's open up transform and change the scale from 100 down to 10. There, and now we've got a much bigger noise than before. And this is giving nice bigger dashes and gaps in our lines, which is closer to our reference. But we can't see our footage through it. But that's easier to change. We just change the noise effects blending mode from normal to overlay. And now we can see our footage underneath. Let's zoom out and we can see that that bigger noise is much nicer than the smaller noise, but it's still way too strong and is distorting it way too much. So let's turn the opacity of this layer down from 100% to 50%. And that's reduced much more, much better. Now I've got a lot more variation in those flatter areas. And if we select that noise layer and just toggle it on and off, we can see how much of a difference it really makes. And again, if this is too much, you can turn down the opacity even more, but I think I like it at 50. Now let's go back into our main comp. We can remove that locked window and drag this comp back into here. There, now we've just got one composition window and let's see the whole effect animated. Now, if you do want some animation to these lines to give it a bit of a boil and make it look a bit more hand-drawn, we can simply go into our footage layer, into our fractal noise effect, open up evolution options, optional alt click random seed and add the simple expression time asterisk four, which will give a new random seed every four frames or so. So we get a nice boiling noise. And in our main comp, that looks like some slight variations in our lines. And I think that's a little better than keeping it static, but it's not as distracting as the noise we had before animating every frame and looking really jittery. But again, you can turn this off and adjust to your taste. Now, if you wanna change the color to make it look a bit more like regular money, we can go to this adjustment layer and add the effects tint. And we can just turn on our reference and then map the black to one of these dark colors and map the white to this green paper color. And now we've got it the color of money. And if you want a more detailed engraving, we can simply select all of our line layers, open up scale with S on our keyboard and drag them down to bring all the lines closer together. Now, if you scale this down far enough, you're gonna run out of lines at the edges, but you can always increase the repeaters on each of these. But I think that works best at 100 for now. And now that this is all set up, we can simply go in and replace our footage. So let's go into this comp and above National Treasure, let's just drag in my YouTube intro. Now we can see the contrast isn't quite where we want it to be. So we just go into effects and maybe just let's reset this curves effect. So we're not adjusting the contrast at all. There, now let's go into our engraving main there. And we can see that that's instantly applied and affected to this new clip. Everything will just work. Again, you can get this project file with everything all set up to save yourself a bunch of time, and that is just $9.95 on Gumroad with a link in the description. 
I'd love to see what you create with it. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.